This is a follow-up to our in-class description of the genetic technique by which genes are ordered in a switch regulatory pathway. This is termed epistasis. Remember, the word epistasis means standing on top of. What this means in genetics is that if one organism harbors two mutations and the phenotype of one mutation is, is what is observed, that means that this mutation has stood on top of or blocked the phenotype of the other mutation, and thus this mutation is epistatic to the other with respect to the phenotype that we're looking at. This would mean that that gene is actually closest to the switch that's being thrown that causes the phenotype we're looking at. In this case, we will be looking at the phenotype of lineage development of the vulva, and this is exemplified by the genes present here, LIN4, 14, 28, and 29. These genes are in a pathway that govern the development of the vulval cells. And we see here the single mutant phenotypes are in the first column. And you'll see that the LIN4 mutant gives a bag of worms. Their babies are not, are not laid, their eggs are not laid, and therefore they develop within the animal, giving this bag of worm phenotype. That's a, supposed to be a bag of worms. LIN14, by contrast, is wild type, and the, and the progeny are laid, and they crawl around the plate, as you can sort of see in this description. LIN28 is like LIN14, and LIN29 is also supposed to be a bag of worms. That looks a little funny. Now we're going to go into the double mutant analysis that will allow us to determine epistasis. So we're looking in this column at mutants that are double with LIN4. The LIN14, LIN4 double you see there, is wild type, meaning that LIN14 is epistatic to LIN4. And likewise, LIN28 is epistatic to LIN4, while LIN29 phenocopies LIN4 and itself, so it looks just like the LIN29 itself. Now we'll do the test with LIN14. And LIN14, as we mentioned before, in the reverse combination is still epistatic to LIN4, as is LIN28. We're skipping the LIN14, LIN14 single, and we're going on to LIN29, LIN14 double, which looks just like LIN29. This means that LIN29 is epistatic to LIN14. Likewise, LIN28 is, or LIN29 is also epistatic to LIN28. Thus, as you can see, LIN29 is epistatic to all of the other genes that are examined in this pathway. And it would then be the most downstream in this switch regulatory pathway that we are looking at. Now looking at LIN14 and LIN28, we can see that LIN14 and LIN28 are each epistatic to LIN4 because the wild type phenotype is dominant over the bag of worms phenotype in this case with this combination of mutations. This means that LIN14 and LIN28 are more downstream than LIN4 and we are now able to understand the epistatic relationship between LIN1428 and LIN4. This understanding of the epistatic relationship between these genes will allow us to draw our pathway. LIN29 is most downstream, it's epistatic to everything, and LIN14 and 28 are each are next downstream and they're because they're each epistatic to LIN4. And so we would say LIN29 is most downstream, and LIN14 and 28 are second in line. And now we are in a place where we can determine the regulatory relationship between the members of this pathway. We have ordered the pathway, and now the regulatory relationship between the members is what is very important. And in order to do this, we make a mental test that we're going to show on this board where we're going to play with 
understanding what loss of function within these genes will show. And so loss of function of LIN29, we remember, shows a bag of worms phenotype. And so we can test whether we think LIN29 is either promoting the wild type and blocking the bag of worms phenotype, or promoting the wild, blocking the wild type and promoting the bag of worms phenotype in our minds by doing the following test. And so we're going to take this question and in our minds we're going to get rid of LIN29 and ask what the phenotype is. So loss of LIN29, remember, gives only bags of worms. So that means that the wild type is lost and the bag of worms is not repressed. And that's the upper panel. I'll go over this again. If um, just pause it and, and look at this again if that didn't make sense to you. But it's promoting the wild type function of LIN29, promotes the wild type worm, and blocks the bag of worms. Its loss then gives the opposite. So in this pathway analysis, we are going to be looking at the wild type function of each of these members in the context of what happens when they're lost. And if our arrows or bars, the arrow remember means promoting and the bar means repressing, if the arrows or bars will give us the, the, the um, outcomes that we've actually seen. So our arrows and bars are predictions and we test these by the phenotypes that we have actually observed in our experiments. Okay, in this test remember that LIN29 in this case is going to be acting in its wild type capacity, which is to promote the wild type and block the bag of worms. Okay, so now we're going to get rid of LIN14 or LIN28 in the context of all the other genes functioning in, the wild, in their wild type capacity. So, is LIN14 or LIN28 promoting with the arrow or blocking with the bar LIN29 function? When LIN29 function normally. So we ask, what does loss of LIN14 over LIN28 do? And we know that it produces wild type progeny. So if LIN14 or LIN28 were not present, they could not, and they could not promote, if, it, if they are acting to promote LIN29 function and they're not there, then LIN29 would not be active and you would get a bag of worms. Thus, LIN29 must be active when LIN14 and 28 are lost. And the only regulatory relationship would be that of repressing LIN29. Okay, so that if they are repressing LIN29 and they are removed, then LIN29 is free to go ahead and promote the wild type phenotype. So we're trying the opposite first. We're getting rid of the activation of LIN29. And so loss of inactivation or promotion would inactivate LIN29 function. And the prediction from an inactive LIN29, remember, would be a bag of worms. However, because we know that's actually the case, LIN29 mutant is a bag of worms, but the LIN14, LIN28 mutants are not a bag of worms, they're wild type. So the upper arrow is incorrect. In so it must be that these two repress LIN29. Okay, so that's our regulatory relationship. LIN14 and LIN28 are likely to repress LIN29. So now we test our theory by getting rid of LIN14 LIN28. And now you would not have repression of LIN29. LIN29 would be wild type and it would promote wild type worms, block the bag of worms, and you get a wild type phenotype. Thus, it looks like indeed what our prediction matched exactly what we saw in the, with the phenotypes. And 
that allows us to be sure that that regulatory relationship is there. LIN 14 and 28 would thus normally repress LIN 29. Going on to LIN 4 now, we ask whether LIN 4 either promotes or blocks LIN 14 and 28 function. So once again, we will remove, we will look at the LIN 4 mutant. So if LIN 4 is gone, everybody else is wild type. Then, and if LIN 4 is gone and it promotes LIN 14 activity, so we take the first, the uppermost possibility, then LIN 4 would not be active. LIN 14 would not be active, right? If LIN 4 is gone and, they, and it requires LIN 4 activity, it would not be active, and the phenotype would be that of a LIN14 loss, which is a wild-type worm. Hmm. However, this is not what we see, right? The LIN4 mutants are a bag of worms. So, LIN14 then does not require the, the activation by LIN4. So LIN4 must repress LIN14. So let's try that out. So now, if we get, we're gonna test this by getting rid of LIN14 in our minds here, making, so it's a LIN4, I mean a LIN4, a LIN4 in our minds here, sorry, I misspoke. So get rid of LIN4 in our minds. This would leave LIN14 and LIN28 active because they're no longer repressed. They would then repress LIN29, and LIN29 couldn't function to promote wild-type worms, so then it would, and it could not repress the bag of worms. So we would then have LIN29 inactive because it would be repressed by LIN14 and 28. LIN29 is off. No block to the bag of worms, no promotion of the wild type, and the resultant phenotype would be bag of worms. So, loss of LIN4 would relieve repression on 14 and 28, and then that would allow LIN14 and 28 to repress LIN29, and that would be like a LIN29 mutant and this is a bag of worms, so this all works with our arrows and bars that we've provided. LIN4 represses LIN1428, which each in turn repress LIN29, and LIN29 is responsible for promoting the wild-type phenotype and repressing the bag of worms. And this pathway, remember, was the first to discover microRNAs.